hi everyone uh, nice to see you all again uh, I'm sorry that uh, I haven't been posting videos very regularly but I hope that uh, from now I'll be more regular so I'll straight away get into the topic the last video we stopped at uh, the doublet flow and we saw the streamlines of a doublet flow in this video what we will be doing is that we will be combining combining the doublet flow and the uniform flow uh, to in order to get a, 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 a different flow so let's see what that flow looks like so let's start so what we're trying to do is we have a uniform flow uh, we should start writing it have a uniform flow and we have a doublet flow now let's just uh, write the stream functions of uh, both these flows which is psi which is going to be equal to v infinity y right so in polar coordinates this is going to be v infinity r sine theta now in the previous lecture we saw the stream function of a doublet flow to be minus kappa by 2 pi r into sine theta where kappa is the sine uh, is the strength of the uh, doublet so let's just put these two together so as i've said in the previous lectures since these satis satisfy the laplace equation we can just add them up to get a new solution to the flow so we're just going to add these two up the, what that results in is v infinity r sine theta minus kappa by 2 pi r sine theta right so now uh, let me just take v infinity r sine theta uh, common so i'm factoring that out that leaves me with 1 minus uh, kappa by 2 pi v infinity into 1 by r square right so uh, what I now do is I set this term kappa by 2 pi v infinity uh, as some capital r square so which gives me v infinity r sine theta into 1 minus capital r square by small r square right so let me just erase everything else and just retain the final uh, result <coughs> excuse me so I have psi is equal to v infinity r sine theta into 1 minus r square by r square so now if this is my flow field or rather if this is the streamlines to the flow field that I have uh, I can I can get the velocity field by differentiating the stream function right so in polar coordinates V R is given as 1 by R dou psi by dou theta and V theta is given by minus 1 by R dou psi by I'm sorry there's no 1 by r it's just going to be minus one uh, minus dou psi by dou r so if i differentiate this expression according to these formulae what i get for vr would be uh, 1 by r into uh, differentiating this will give me v infinity r cos theta and that's going to be a constant so that gives me v infinity r cos theta into 1 minus r squared by r squared so here the r and r here get cancelled which leaves me with v infinity cos theta into 1 minus r squared by r squared so this is going to be the radial velocity uh, at any given uh, point in the flow field so uh, let me just uh, yeah let me just retain this 
and now let's look at what we get when we differentiate psi with respect to r in order to give the uh, v theta velocity field so when i differentiate uh, this before that i i would like to take the r inside which leaves me with uh, so let me just clear this part so I'll just like write this result down here v r is v infinity cos theta into 1 minus r squared by r squared so I'll erase this part so before I uh, do the differentiation for uh, v theta I'd like to take the r inside which gives me psi is v infinity sine theta into r minus r squared by r now if I differentiate this with respect to r what it gives me is v theta is minus of v infinity sine theta which is a constant because we di we're differentiating with respect to r uh, that becomes a 1 and this is going to give me a minus 1 by r square that makes it 1 plus r squared by r squared so what we have now is v theta which is minus v infinity sine theta into 1 plus r squared by r squared right so we have the velocity field and now we can find out uh, which are the stagnation points in our flow field so for that let's uh, set each of these vr and v theta to 0 so let's first take vr to be 0 and clearly from the expression vr is 0 when uh, r is equal to r because the term in the bracket is 1 minus r squared capital R squared by small r squared so when small r e equals capital R it's going to give me a 0 and when theta is going to be pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2 because we have a cos theta in the expression for vr right so now let's look at when v theta goes to 0 v theta goes to c 0 when uh, theta is either 0 or pi so theta is 0 or pi means that v theta is 0 and of course the term in the bracket that is 1 plus capital R square by small r square cannot be 0 because it's a uh, it's you're adding a positive quantity to the value 1 so if you look at these uh, terms here uh, let's just uh, let's let's just plot this and see what happens so we have so let's say let's first plot this uh, circle r equals r so that's going to be the circle r equals r so along this circle uh, vr is going to be 0 right and at points when theta is 0 and pi which is here and here v theta is going to be 0 so at these two points a and b vr is 0 because r is equal to capital R and v theta is 0 because at those points theta is 0 and pi so a and b become the stagnation points and all along the circle v r is going to remain 0 because r equals r and v theta is going to change v theta is not going to be 0 uh, everywhere in the circle except for the points a and b so this is uh, uh, how the, the so, so this essentially means that there's going to be no radial component of flow that is going to be you know crossing this surface so v theta is going to be non-zero so we're going to have v theta near the surface but v r is going to be zero because r equals r so that means there's no penetration so this is essentially flow over a cylinder right so when we add a doublet and a uniform flow what we get is flow over a cylinder now let's look at the pressure distribution on the cylinder surface so for that <coughs> let me uh, let me just erase uh, yeah let me just erase this right so uh, a little below yeah. 
So now let's say I have this cylinder, right? So uh, this point corresponds to R comma zero, sorry, capital R comma zero, and this point corresponds to capital R comma pi. So let me call this A, and let me call this B. So now let's look at what this what the pressure distribution is. And so yeah, uh, for any general point on the surface. The coordinates are going to be r, comma theta, where theta is the angle that uh, it makes with the x-axis. So now, let's uh, find the pressure distribution along the surface. So first of all, Cp, which is the pressure distribution, is given by 1 minus v by v infinity, the whole squared. Right. So v is the uh, magnitude of the resultant velocity at that given point and v infinity is the free, st free stream velocity so on the surface uh, clearly uh, okay so v is going to be the resultant of vr and v theta so there's going to be something like square root of vr square plus v theta square uh, however on the surface uh, that is small r equals capital r vr is going to be zero so all we have is going to be v theta. So v the resultant velocity is going to be equal to v theta. And v theta from there is given by minus v infinity sine theta into 1 plus capital R square by small r square. However, on the surface, capital R and small r are equal. And therefore, the term in the bracket becomes 2 into 2. So that gives me minus 2 v infinity sine theta. So this is going to be the resultant velocity on the surface of the cylinder. So let me erase this off. So substituting this into the expression for Cp gives me 1 minus minus 2 v infinity sine theta by v infinity the whole square which gives me 1 minus 4 sine squared theta. Right? So now let's just try and plot this pressure distribution uh, against theta. So for that, let me resort to a graph like this, where the y-axis is going to be Cp and the x-axis is going to be theta, right? So theta equal to 0 is this point, which corresponds to the point A. So let me just name the other points, C and D maybe. So I've got A, B, C, and D. So theta equal to pi is going to give me the point. Uh, I'm sorry, theta equal to pi by 2 is going to give me the point C. So let me just mark the point C, which corresponds to theta equal to pi by 2. Point B gives me pi. And at point D, theta value is, uh, is going to be 3 pi by 2. So that's the point D. Right. So now let's just uh, substitute the values of theta in this expression and get the corresponding Cp. So at A, theta happens to be 0. So the Cp value we get is going to be 1. So it's going to be somewhere there. At the point C, theta is going to be, uh, 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 theta, theta is pi by 2. Therefore, this is going to give me 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. So I have a point somewhere here. And uh, at the point B, we have theta as pi, which means this is going to go to 0 again. And Cp is going to be 1. And at the point D, uh, we have uh, sine of 3 pi by 2 uh, to be uh, minus 1. And then that gives me again uh, 1 minus 4, which is minus 3. So what we get is essentially a curve like this. So let's just see uh, what sort of a force distribution or what sort of resultant forces this pressure distribution is going to create. So if you look at the top surface, which is A, C, and B, that is essentially A, C, and B, right? So this is, is going to be the top surface. And uh, just for the sake of completeness, let me plot the point A again over here. So a, a is going to be like 2 pi, which is the same as 0. So the curve is going to go back here. It's going to be A again. So like I said, the upper surface is ACB. So ACB. So this is going to be the pressure distribution 
for ACB and for B lower surface which is BDA BDA we have this pressure distribution right so you can see that the upper surface and the lower surface have exactly the same pressure distribution and this would essentially mean that the cylinder is going to uh, experience absolutely no lift so let's also look at the drag drag aspect so for the drag aspect let's look at the front half and the back half of the cylinder so if we look at the front half it's going to be DAC right so DAC uh, just for the sake of uh, continuity I'll just plot the point C again over here because this is going to go in loops because theta is varying uh, you know in uh, from 0 to 2 pi and uh, beyond that it's just going to be a repetition so I can very well plot the point C here I'm going to get it here so now if you look at the front face you have DAC which is going to be this portion of the curve right and the back face is CBD which is so we have the back face and we have the front face here again we see that we have a symmetry as far as the pressure distribution is concerned and therefore the drag is also going to be zero so what we get is CL equals CD both equal zero so in essence a doublet flow when added to a uniform flow does give a flow over a circular cylinder however it does not have any resultant forces so the cylinder cannot experience either a lift or a drag so in the next video we will, we will see what modification we can do in this sort of an analysis so that we can get a cylinder that experiences a finite lift so thanks for watching uh, and stay tuned for the future videos thank you